Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you the Space Bear Green Big Watercolour Spacing card using stamps by Mama Elephant. I'm going to start today by using Mama Elephant's Space Bear stamp set, which is a really adorable stamp set with a, a wide range of little images and space bears. So I'm going to start by choosing the image that I want. I did choose the one that's sitting down. I'm going to have him sitting on a little planet, looking up to the stars, dreaming about his little life and where he wants to go. So I'm just going to remove the stamp and position where I want him to sit on the cardstock. I'm using Canson watercolour cardstock. It's 300 GSM. It's a really thick, sturdy good watercolour cardstock. So I'm just going to position them in place. So I'm going to use some Ranger Archival Black Ink, which I'll show you in a minute, to stamp this out. It's waterproof, so it's not going to smudge and blend when I use watercolours later on. It's going to stay a nice, crisp, black image. So I'm just putting this on my stamp block, giving it a good inking up, and then I'm going to press it down firmly into the position that I want making sure there's no dust or particles, I'm just rubbing to make sure it's clean and then pressing down to make sure I get a nice image before we move on to the next step. So in between using stamps I clean mine off using baby wipes. I just make sure that I take off all the ink with baby wipe and then a kitchen towel to make sure they stay clean. Now I wanted him sitting on a little planet or a moon um, and in the set there's some really cute little um, scenes where you can lay multiple lines and it creates like the, the edge of a moon or a planet. So I'm just using them now to create a little edge of a crater, moon, planet, whatever you want to call it, that the bear's sitting on. I'm using both of them to make sure that, that it breaks up the line and it's not the same repeated pattern. So I'm just stamping this out before we get ready to watercolour. So before we start the watercolouring, I just want to go through what supplies I'll be using to do this. For the bear and the planet, I'll be using Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers. And for the space scene, I'm going to be using the Brusho Powder Watercolours. Now I haven't used the Brushos that much, but I've recently been experimenting and found that it creates some really good space scenes because the colours are so vibrant. So for the bear and the planet, I'm going to start by colouring the planet. I'm just currently picking the colours that I want to use. I don't actually use them all. Um, I end up using brown grey, dark grey and blue grey um, just to give the planet a little bit of depth and what looks like texture. Um, for the bear, I use beige oatmeal and dark brown and then pink for his nose. I'm also using one of these Pentel watercolour brushes. Um, I find these are really good with the Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers. Um, it just gives you a bit more control and I just find them, it works really well for me. I'm starting with the darkest marker, which is the dark grey, to put shadows underneath where the bears sat. I'm also going to sporadically put marks across the planet's surface where I think there'd be craters or texture. And then I'll take my water brush and feather this out so that it's got a smooth, consistent look and there's no harsh lines. If you haven't used one of these brushes before, they're really easy to use. To fill the, the brushes up with water, you unscrew the brush end, um, which then gives you the length of the brush as the, the barrel where the water sits. And you literally run it under a tap or use a paper pet to... Fill, fill the barrel up and um, screw the brush end back on and your water brush is ready to go. These are really handy if you like to take your crafty stuff travelling or you like control with watercolours and you don't like too much saturation on your paper. You literally squeeze these brushes ever so slightly and you get enough water to make that paint move around. So definitely recommend trying these if you do like that kind of thing. So for the second colour I'm using the blue grey just to add um, a slightly different tone and give it a bit more of a textured look. Um, it will kind of smudge and blend with the other grey colour. Um, so again I'm going to feather it out with my watercolour brush 
just to give it a smoother look um, but also make sure that there's still some kind of texture there I don't want it to look like a flat surface for the final grey I'm going to add in the brown grey which again is a slightly different tone it's a warmer shade so it adds a bit more depth to the planet I'm going to add this um, again in sporadic areas but I'm also going to make a shadow of the bear um, just so that it sets it apart from the other greys and then once again to finish it off blend it out with the water brush in between the watercolouring of the planet and the bear I will just use my heat tool just to dry this off ever so slightly um, I don't want the two images to blend together so I'm just going to hit it for a couple of seconds just to make sure that it's dry enough for me to move on to the next section so for the bear I'm going to start with the lightest colour which is I believe oatmeal um, for the main section of the bear um, sorry my hands in the way here I'm just putting this colour around the edges to start with and then I use my watercolour brush to um, spread that colour across the rest of the bear these markers um, when you put them onto the page they are really strong colours so I tend to start with a little amount and blend that out with the water and go back and add more if I need to later I do tend to use a lot of layering with these markers because the colours are so strong um, for me I find it easier to, to add rather than to try and take off the colour so you'll find that I just go back in and add more as and when I need it, blend it out etc and then I'll use darker colours eventually on top just to add that extra depth and dimension and tone as well for the tummy of the bear I'm using beige which is a really light flesh tone colour I start by putting this on the left hand side and then I spread it out with my watercolour brush across the rest of it um, I do add some of the oatmeal to it later as I did find it a little bit too light um, but I will show you that as we get in further into the video um, I also added some of the beige to his snout as well One of the things that I love about these markers is that you don't have to put the ink directly onto the page. You can put it onto a slick surface and then pick it up with your brush. So one of the things I like to do is put it on an acrylic block or a piece of acetate and then I use my watt brush just to pick up a small amount of that um, ink and add it to the image that I'm colouring. So this is what the bear and the planet looks like once we finish with the watercolouring. I'm now going to set this aside to dry while we work on the space scene. So I'm going to bring out my Ranger non-stick craft sheet um, which I will temporarily adhere with painters tape the cancer and cardstock down 
this just stops it warping quite as much during the watercolour process. Um, I will be using a lot of water um, with the brush o powders. Um, I've literally just clipped it to a clipboard because it helps me move it around my surfaces a lot easier. So I'm preparing the paper by spritzing it with a lot of water. I'm, I'm literally doing this till it puddles on the surface and then I'm going to take a clean brush and wipe it across just to make sure I've got every section of that piece of paper. Um, if I haven't already mentioned this is an A6 size. Um, so to start with the brush o powders I'm going to start with some leaf green. Now these are concentrated watercolour powders so you only need a small amount to get some really vibrant colours. So I think it was Sandy Olnock that did the pin method in the top. Um, and it literally, you pierce the top of the, the, the tubs with a pin and it lets just enough out when you shake it that it doesn't go everywhere. Um, so once I put the colours down, I use lemon violet and leaf green to start with. I'm spritzing it again to spread that colour and then I'm going to use my heat tool just to dry this off in between the different layers. So that's the first layer done. I'm going to do quite a lot so I'm going to spritz it again and then add some more colour on. I'm now going to add some of the OST blue which is going to start to make it look more like a night slash space sky. Um, than a random blob of colours on the page and if you're now thinking wow this is looking a mess <laughs> bear with me it does get there um, with these kind of scenes you just have to play around keep layering keep spritzing also try different colour combinations I've done it with reds and oranges purples and pinks um, yellows and greens um, for this one I just I decided to mix the yellow green and purples um, but the more layers you do, um, it, it will get there. Um, I've sped up the drying process because um, it does get a bit lengthy and a bit boring. But you'll see how the colours tend to mute when they dry. Um, they are quite dark when they first go on, so also bear that in mind. So more spritzing, more colours going on. Um, I've decided to add more of that green back in um, just so that it pops through. And I think a bit more of the violet also goes back into the corner before I start to add some of the darker colours which will eventually make it look like the space sky. If you do find that you get puddles of colours where you don't um, where you don't necessarily want um, puddles then you can just use a kitchen towel like I've been doing to mop up some of that colour um, and also to, to keep it less messy um, and now comes the fun bit where you add in the black and suddenly it goes very dark <laughs> um, but once it dries it it kind of goes like a translucent black I know that sounds really weird, um, but the colours underneath in the in the previous layers do come through, and it it just looks awesome when it dries. Um, it does take a while to dry, and as you can see, there's a lot of water currently sat on my page, and this is another reason why taping it down is useful, um, because otherwise it would warp quite a bit.
So now I've finished with the layering, I'm just going to complete the drying process one more time with my heat tool. And then no space is complete without stars. So I'm using the Diane Wakely Gesso. I'm just going to put some in a little palette and spritz some water in there just to water it down. Because I don't want a thick layer of white on onto the sky. So I'm just going to mix it with a little brush and with some water before I spatter it across the page. If you haven't done the spatter technique before, um, it's really fun if a little bit messy. Um, all you need to do is water down some paint or gesso. Um, gesso, if you've not heard of it, is kind of a chalky paint. Um, you can make your own, but I just prefer to buy it. Um, so you load up a small paintbrush. I use a small one. Um, and then you hover it above your page and flick your brush and it creates these small speckles as you can see here. Um, it does get a bit messy so I tend to keep fairly close to the page so it doesn't go all over my desk. And then I just wanted some bigger blobs so I added a bit more to my brush and did it closer to my page. And the, the, the closer to the page you are the bigger the blobs. So as well as the speckled stars, I wanted to add some um, dimensional stars. And I've recently got this Cosmic Shimmer Texture Paste, um, which I wanted to try out. This is similar to an embossing paste. You apply it the same way using spatula and a stencil. Um, so for this one, I'm not sure where I got this from, but it's just I'm using these small stars um, at the bottom of the stencil for this background. And as you can see, this cosmic shimmer is super glittery. Um, it also goes on very white, um, but when it dries, it's actually more translucent with uh, glitter. So I'm just taking a small amount and spreading it across the image um, where I want it, um, across the stencil. You only need a bit of this. It goes quite a long way. Um, and obviously, the thicker you do your layers, of uh, texture paste the longer it will take to dry. Um, so I wanted to add some more on the other side. I was just trying to position where I wanted them and I took a little bit more paste and added some more stars. Um, it's important when you finish with this texture paste to clean off your spatula and stencil with water. I take mine to the sink and clean it off straight away as once it dries it is incredibly difficult to get it off. Once I've done that, I put it aside to dry and I fussy cut out the watercolour image that we did earlier, which has now dried, because I'm going to put this on dimensional foam um, on the space background so that he sticks out like he's floating around in space. So I'm just taking my scissors and fussy cutting this out. I sped it up because it did take me a while. And then, as you can see, this is now... The background's now dry and super sparkly and the space colours have really come out well. Now it's fully dry. And I'm just going to trim those untidy white edges off using my paper trimmer. So once all my pieces are ready to go, I'm just kind of putting them together with my um, blank card. This is an A6 300 GSM uh, blank card stock. I think it's a Paper Mania one um, from Do Crafts. Um, so I'm just laying out to make sure everything fits well. And then for my sentiment, I'm going to heat emboss the um, Dream Big onto some black cardstock. So I use my anti-static bag just to wipe over that surface first to make sure none of the embossing powder sticks where I don't want it to. And then I'm going to use the VersaFine embossing ink to ink up my stamp before I stamp it onto the black cardstock and I'm using Paper Mania's silver embossing powder for this which is quite a fine one um, and it, it heats up really well so I'm just going to add that I always store my little my frequently used embossing powders in the tubs it just makes it so much easier to sprinkle over and tip it back into the tubs and it doesn't get wasted or thrown all over my workspace. And I tap it off just to make sure it doesn't stick to where I don't want it to. And then hit it quickly with my heat tool. 
getting ready for the next bit. I used waffle flowers tags just to cut a small tag out for this. Um, I just wanted to position it in that top left corner. I didn't want it just to be a straight rectangle. And then I found that I had some grey and white twine that I thought would work really well with this. So I just double threaded it through the loop. And then I took the two ends and threaded them through the original loop so that it would stick to the tag. I do trim this down a little bit later because it is a bit long. But it's always better to trim it down than it to be too short. So as you can see, when you pull it, it sticks to the tag. I'm going to adhere this card together using some um, Scotch 3mm dimensional foam tape. I absolutely love this stuff. It's hard to get in the UK, um, so I tend to have to get it from America and shipped over, so it takes a little while for it to get here. But it is the best foam tape I've used. So I'm just adhering this to the back of the bear and the planet, and I'm also going to add some onto the back of the tag as well. And I will eventually put the whole card on um, foam tape. Because I've watercoloured this and the paper does warp a little bit, if you add a whole load of foam tape to the back of this before putting it on the white cardstock, it will stay flatter. Um, it does make the card a little bit more dimensional, which I like anyway, and bulky. Um, but it also keeps it flatter. So this is where I'm trying to decide where that tag is best, um, whether to leave it in the top left, shim it around, what do I do with that twine, do I leave it hanging off the edge or do I tuck it? So I'm having a bit of a play and a bit of a think to see what's best. And then I decide, let's adhere it into the left corner with some foam tape. So I'm just going to add a bit more of that on there. So now we have the foam tape on the back, I'm just going to adhere it to the card base. And then for the finishing touches, I'm just going to add some of the Ranger's glossy accents to the bear's helmet. Mine is just in a smaller um, bottle with a fine tip nozzle just to make it easier for um, adhering to the smaller areas on cards. So that completes the card for today, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I'll leave a link to my blog in the description box below which includes a full list of supplies and a closer look at the card. Please like, comment, subscribe and I'll be back next week with a new video. Bye!